Kimionek. I'm from Poland. I'm an associate professor of management in Warsaw. Uh, within the Wikimedia movement, I'm, I'm a steward and an admin and bureaucrat on Polish Wikipedia. And I'm mostly interested in strategy, setting goals, uh, in defining the ways in which goals can be adjusted to strategy. This is pretty much my area of expertise. And I'm uh, passing to Christian. Thank you. I'm Christian Consonni. Uh, my nickname is Christian Cantoro. I'm from Wikimedia Italy. I'm from Italy. I work uh, as in a research center in Trento. And uh, I'm the vice president of uh, Wikimedia Italia. I'm also a member of Wikimedia France. I've been involved uh, in the movement uh, since uh, 2008. And that's all about me. I'm interested in uh, pretty much everything regarding the movement. Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Arjuna. I am from India. Uh, I have been uh, working on the Wikimedia movement from over, from 2007 onwards. And I was earlier the founder of the, co-founder of the Indian chapter. Uh, I make, uh, my main interests are in program management and uh, engineering management and cons uh, open source. So I'll be happy to kind of interact in the session. Hi, I'm Mike Peel. I'm from the UK. Um, I've been editing Wikipedia since about 2005. Um, I was a trustee of Wikimedia UK from 2008 until very recently. Um, I'm interested in, particularly in chapters, but also generally in movement, um, organizational structure, and evolution. Uh, my name is Yuri Perahanich. I am from Ukraine. Uh, I am a head of the Chamber of Commerce for IT companies and I lobby their interests within the government, and uh, I'm active in Ukrainian wiki media and also in Ukrainian Wikipedia. Uh, hello, I'm Susanna from Portugal. Uh, I've been a Wikimedian since 2004, I think, and um, I'm the ombudsperson, so if you have any appeal regarding the process, you come to me. Um, you can find my contact anywhere, so there are no excuses that you don't uh, give some feedback. And um, that's it. Hi, uh, I'm Delphine Ménard. I am French. Uh, I live in Germany and I'm part of the uh, German uh, Wikimedia Deutschland uh, board. Uh, I am with Christian, uh, one of the two very newly elected uh, members of the FDC. So basically we're learning as you are. And um, uh, I'm very happy to be here and to be able to answer questions because we've been briefed quite a, quite a bit. And uh, I think we can start to answer questions. Hello, uh, I'm Ali Haider Khan, FDC member. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm a financial analyst by profession and I'm a member of Wikimedia Bangladesh, a founder member. I, I'm also the treasurer of Wikimedia Bangladesh, and I've been involved with Wikimedia movement since 2008. And please ask me a question if you have any regarding any FDC issues. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sydney Poor, and I'm from Kentucky in the United States. I began editing in 2005, and um, I started off um, with uh, the username Flo Knight because of Florence Nightingale. I'm a registered nurse and thought I would write medical articles. I didn't really do that. I ended up um, being very interested in biographies of living people and that kind of drew me into being a functionary and check user and various things. And um, I, from that I leaped into being interested in, in the strategic planning and that kind of led me into the financial side of matters. And that's how I ended up kind of in this role. I would love to have a chance to talk to anyone who's interested in talking about any type of grant making in, in specifically the FTC. Uh, okay, so since it's a little bit over 40 people in the room, uh, we thought that the most effective uh, allocation of time that we have here would be to not really give you a presentation per se, but rather use the so-called world cafe method so that you can mingle with us, discuss different topics. And I would like to uh, ask Katie to explain more or less how it works. Thank you. It's very odd to stand on a stage and look at all of my colleagues, but um, thank you so much for coming to the session. And again, my name is Katie Love. I am the FDC program officer, so I've had the honor and pleasure of working with a lot of you and actually want to introduce my two other colleagues. I'm Winifred. I'm the grants administrator. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I don't have a voice, uh, but I am Anasuya, and I run grant making when I have a voice. 
She doesn't need a voice to run grant making. She has her fingers to type. <laughs> okay, so as Dariush was saying, the idea here is to have a very natural conversation to both share some of the things that the FDC has been learning over the last year and also to hear back from you all about your thoughts as they, as they develop their own expertise and methodology for reviewing proposals. So this is a little bit difficult to do in a stadium auditorium. Um, but we are hoping to have actual conversations with you. So we have a bit of an odd configuration here where we've got some seats up here, we'll have some groups over here, and for those of you that have not participated in a World Cafe methodology, the idea is that there are small groups, each of which has a facilitator, and the FDC members have generously offered to be the facilitators for those conversations, and you will have about five to 10 minutes to talk about a particular topic. The three topics that you will be discussing are some of the key areas that they'd like to share with you about and hear a bit more from you about, which are first, why and what, the starting point and rationale, how you develop strategy, how you work with your community for developing your annual plan and your proposal to the FDC. The second one is about how and how do we know it works. That's more around the programs that you operate, the program design, the management, and the metrics. And then finally, there's going to be a group around, um, around budgets and uh, growth. And that one's called how much and for what. So that's around how you decide how much to put into your organizational budget and your proposal to the FDC. So this is hopefully going to work, but it very well may not. So I apologize in advance if it doesn't. But the idea is to split you into diverse groups and to do that, I have a little bit of a, an odd exercise, so I ask for your willingness to participate in it, and if you don't, well, fine. So what I have in my hand, and this was a bit of a challenge to do since we didn't know how many of you would show up, but we have um, split you already into groups. The way that you will find out what group you're in is by opening the piece of paper in my hand when you get it, and it will have an animal name on it. You will then have to act out your animal and find your herd. Yes, Stephen, this includes you. <laughs> so it's, it's about uh, finding your group together. For those of you face palming right now, it's okay. We all have to do it. And hopefully it will be a little bit of fun too. And if not, sorry.
the discussion is done or shall I Oh just no, in? they can come in. If someone comes in late? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just send them here and we they can join in. Oh. I'll, we'll find a place for them. Okay, okay. Yeah, just you send them to me. Okay. No problem. Thanks, Thanks for asking. example like that one um, looks like it's pretty small so you might just go ahead and join them. I'm Winifred by the way. What's your name? Ahmed. Ahmed, nice to meet you. Nasser, nice to meet you. So feel free to join them. Uh, <laughs> Nice to meet you. Uh, We're just getting started with some group discussions, so you can go ahead and choose a group. What is the session? Which session are you looking for? Oh, that's not happening until the end of the session. So this is the first part of the session right now. We're all doing small group discussions for that one. So you can join any discussion you like. Yeah, go ahead, please.
Okay. Now, I'm sorry to interrupt your conversations, but the way this works is that you've just created an excellent foundation for the next group to talk about this very interesting topic. So the conversation doesn't have to stop here, but it's just the beginning. You'll hear more at the end about what everyone else has contributed and what they've discussed. But now, usually in this kind of methodology, you all stand up and move somewhere else, but that would be very complicated. So instead, we are asking the facilitators, all six, please to stand up. And Dariush, can you please go to Ali's group? And Ali, can you please go to Delphine's group here on stage? And Delphine, can you come to Dariush's group? Bring your flip chart paper. <laughs> Okay, and then Sydney and Yuri, please go to Mike's group. Mike, please go to Arjuna's group. And Arjuna, please go to Sydney and Yuri's group. Okay, so now you will hear a summary from the facilitator as to what the previous group discussed, and you will then add on to that. You can ask the facilitator questions and you will share your perspectives.
Okay. Wrap up your conversations, please. Facilitators, please stand up with your flip chart paper. Again, the idea here now is you will move groups and you will share what the previous two groups have talked about. You'll explain some of the basic conversation that's taking place to date. And then you'll hear more from this group and again share some of the thoughts you have. So, Darish is still writing, but Darish, when you're done, please take your flip chart paper and go to Ali's group. Ali is in the back here. Ali, please take your flip chart paper and go to Delphine's group right here. And Delphine, you'll go off stage to where Darish is with your flip chart paper. Sydney and Yuri, please switch to Mike's group. Mike, please switch to Arjuna's group. And Arjuna, please switch to Sydney's group. You'll have a few minutes to discuss this last topic before we hear back from everyone.
because I think uh, Chris asked. You'd love the screen, of course. We'll do that. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Okay, please finalize your conversations and know that this is just the beginning of a longer term conversation between all of us here. And may I ask the facilitators to all come on stage and let me ask Daria, Sydney, and Yuri to come together. You've all been working on the strategy and rationale. And Mike and Ali will be joining forces on this. And Arjuna and Delphine. So what we want to do now, I know that I'm interrupting some of you. I really apologize for that. But I've just gotten the bad news. We have to stop exactly on time. So that's why I'm being a bit bold and asking you, Delphine, to stop talking. <laughs> but it's not working. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's do it this way. For those of you that have been working on the same topics, give us your key takeaways. And let me ask everyone in the room that if you have further thoughts, questions, things you want the FDC to consider, please do approach them or the FDC staff directly after the session ends or come visit our grant making booth, which is just upstairs. Uh, we, we had some candy, but I think it's all gone. Um, there's more candy, so don't worry about that. And thank you today for the candy from Ali. So let's start with Dariush and Sydney and Yuri. Could one of you start by telling us what you talked about and the others just add on to that? Not repeat, please. Okay. 
All right, so we had a lot of discussions about the fact that expectations from the chapters might not necessarily overlap with the funding that is provided. Uh, we agreed that it takes a lot of time to prepare a strategy. Even some people have reported 18 months, which, which I think is, is quite a long time. We've agreed there is a vicious circle because you, know, you spend time to apply for money, but you do not have time to do programmatic work. And also, you do not have the money to prepare the strategy, so you need to apply for the money to get a strategy done, and, and so on and so on, catch 22. Uh, and also, there's no warranty that you're going to get funding anyway. So it's, it is a bit, bit precarious situation. Uh, the positive things that we've covered was that as long as you're very precise in your goals, you don't have to be very precise in your plans, which means that if you have a goal in mind, the way how you reach this goal might change during the strategy implementation. Strategy is not really written in stone. We've also agreed that it would be nice sometimes to have a professional facilitator, somebody who helps you in developing the strategy, understanding what your strategic goals are, but we also agreed that it, it is probably not the best idea ever to hire a professional consultant, uh, but rather to try to look for creative ways of getting a, somebody who will give you professional help, not necessarily for a full fee, like a university professor or somebody who is really doing, willing to do this pro bono or for, with the minimal, uh, minimal remuneration. We've agreed that the fund scarcity is out there. So eventually in 10 years, 20 years from now, maybe the movement will not have as much money as it, as it does now. Maybe there will be more chapters. So we have to be uh, sparing. We have to be mindful about the resources. Uh, we've also agreed that local conditions vary a lot. So for example, in Western Europe or in, in the US, it's much easier to get matching funds. So we also gr agreed that it's reasonable. If you can apply for matching funds without forfeiting your mission, so if you can follow your mission with, with matching funds from somewhere, somewhere else, it, it is a good idea. We've agreed on two, two, two other things that would help the chapters. One would be to have something like FDC archives with the projects that received funding or did not receive funding so that you could, could go through. Fortunately enough, it's actually there. You can always look through the projects, the questions and answers to the projects. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of time because these are large, uh, large files. The other idea was that, we, that we could ponder was to have a workshop on strategy in which chapters which had more experience and, and can share something could, could share their experience with the ones that are just trying to apply for the FDC funding. Uh, we've agreed that it's more important to be true to our mission than to get money. Money is not as, uh, an objective on its own. So it's not, you, you should apply to as many foundations as possible and somebody will give you money so we will do what they gave you the money for. It's rather understanding what you want to do, what is your mission, and then look for the sources that can fund exactly that. We've also considered other risks of external funding and uh, that it's also important to maintain your local goals, local interests. They do not have to always be uh, totally overlapping with the overall movement's goals. And the final, final point that we, I think we all agreed that the movement's goals are not necessarily the foundation's goals. So we, within the FDC project, uh, process, we look for alignment with the movement's mission. Uh, so we do not call it the foundation's mission. It's not the foundation that is driving the, the process. It's the movement because the board sets the mission. And I, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. We talked about a lot, you know, a lot of the same things that you did. Um, one of the things that we did, I'm going to touch on, is that came up over and over again was like the identifying who, is, who exactly is your community or thinking of it in terms not necessarily as your community but as the movement that you're trying to reach with. Um, and one of the things we did talk about was the fact that people oftentimes will get into situations where they start doing certain things and then they step back from it and then put that into a strategic plan. You know, And early on, um, communities who aren't very mature don't have the same type of strategic planning as very large, um, more mature organizations do when they are sitting down right now and writing out five-year plans. Um, you know, other organizations very early on are sitting down and doing something much, much more short term. And early on, people are doing things like looking towards um, the foundation's strategic, you know, uh, plans is kind of a jumping off, you know, place. But that those were written five years ago. Our movement certainly has changed since then. So you wouldn't expect every um, location to have the same, um, you know, ideas now. Um, we talked some about logistics of, of like in the frustration of trying to get the community involved in it, like wh whoever the community is and various ways that you can try to do that and work through those issues. Um, we also, 
let's see, talked about. Thank you. And since we have almost no time left, in fact, we are at negative time, can I ask only one representative from the next two groups to quickly present? So either Mike or Ali. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So I'll be very quick. Um, so we looked at specific projects um, and looked at the goals and the metrics that you might use with that. Some of the key um, learnings we got from that were that with metrics, um, every different organization have different key metrics they want to measure, different priorities, um, which is worth bearing in mind, but you also want to have standardization across all of them. Um, we also had, um, yeah, some of the um, metrics you come out with might not be quantitative, but they can also be qualitative, so you can describe what the outcomes were um, in kind of key aspects, rather than just um, using numbers. Uh, and then there's also, um, you can use metrics to um, motivate people, to encourage them to get involved in events. Um, but you have to, have to bear in mind that metrics somewhat need to be complex because they need to cover all the different um, outcomes that are expected. Um, so both from the, say you're working with a partner organization, then you, they will want metrics which you know, need to measure, as well as metrics which will then be reported to the FTC and to the wider community. I'll leave it there. Who's next? Um, so, we talked about budget and growth and how much and for what. Um, the first thing that came up is the ratio between administration, administrative costs and uh, costs for program. Uh, a few things came up, which is basically um, we need also tools to assess the impact of volunteers and how much these are actually staff and administrative costs that are not uh, given out and how much they bring to the, to the value of the, of, of the, <laughs> of the, of the budget. And also, um, uh, of course, to the fact that it varies locally, it's going to be very different. And as FTC, we'll, we'll look at it in, in, in the context and not just, you know, as a number, it has to be the, this many percent or whatever. Uh, so the need for tools came up <laughs> and the fact that uh, we also have to maximize the impact and make sure that it makes sense to do a program that doesn't cost more than it actually brings. Um, the second thing we talked about was what's a good growth rate. So we look at growth on, under two different... Uh, aspects, which is one is the money value, and the other one is the more like the the staffing and <coughs> and how many people uh, may be may be employed by by the organization uh, uh, came up. The idea is like, how do you measure that? How do you measure this this growth rate? And basically, how do you how do you plan it? How do you plan to grow? Um, and uh, we can, we we answered that with. It has to be wise. You have to look at your organization. Uh, there are some numbers out there. Of what is a good growth rate? Forget those numbers. Look at yourself. Kind of uh, make sure that uh, uh, you know where you're going. You know what you want to do. You know how you want to do it. And then uh, try to put this in numbers. But don't do it the other way around. Don't go for the number and then you know cram cram everything in there. Rather uh, make sure make sure and and make sure that um, growth starts at 0.1 percent. You know uh, you don't have to be. Uh, suddenly doubling everything uh, to be growing. You can be growing at this very steady and small, small pace. So there's also a very important part of prioritization, prioritization and knowing what to do first and wh where to come up first. Um, I'm going to skip some of the things, but um, uh, an important thing is to say also that growth is not correlated. Uh, growth in, in, in staff or in uh, volunteer capacity is not correlated. Growth in money, you're going to have more more partners, so you're going to have you know more money that trickles in from from other places or more in-kind uh, help. Um, we also talked about how growth integrates not so much on the individual level of an organization, but for us as a movement, and how can we look at this in the, the grand scheme of things, and not just uh, you know it's it's uh, my organization growing, but what is it that I contribute to the growth or steadiness of the organization as a whole. Um, so this kind of eagle eye kind of look on, on things. Uh, and we also, <coughs> I, uh, we also talked about um, how do we look, at, how does the FTC look at underspending? And it's all a question uh, of conte context. Contextualization is like the reason why you underspend, whether it's because you can't for some external reason or whether, but whether you're not able to do uh, as a kind of a basic thing in, in the way your organization works. So these are the things we tackled. I think it actually, uh, we just looked very quickly and I think we have uh, the, same, the same things. Sorry to cut this short, but the good news is that what we'll be doing is pulling this all together 
and creating not only notes so that everyone can reflect on this more broadly, but also sharing it more with the Wikimedia L list for everyone to reflect on and continue the conversation. But it is time to move to the next session, and I apologize, Asaf, for delaying us. But what we need to do is, as the final activity, everyone needs to take their chairs and move it inside. And thank you all so much. Come visit us. Thank you for contributing to the conversation. Which one is the the um I don't know. Oh the eight is not eight well Pino is not uh on. Does it look on? Does it look on? Does it look on? If it's not on can it is it on? Is it okay? The projector is not on. It's on now, but but you have to change the resolution of this thing. But it's not showing on the screen. But you you have a different resolution. No no on this thing. On this one? Yeah, but you have to change the resolution of this screen and not this screen. Which one? Which one? Okay, I'll show you.